We're going to look at the top 48 cards that sold last night on the PWCC weekly auction number 117 ending April 14th. Watch until the end. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Jordan cards in here. There's a couple of cards that I was chasing after as well, so I'll have lots of stories about those, which ones uh, I chose to chase and which ones I didn't choose to chase. And you got to watch until the end because you will never guess uh, who the highest selling card was last night in PWCC Weekly Auction number 117. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't Jordan, but it was probably Jordan's absolute peak arch nemesis, the guy that everybody loved to hate, and his card sold for about 13x higher than his card has ever sold for in history for whatever reason. Wait until you see this arbitrary sale that was the highest sale from last night's PWCC weekly auction number 117. Enjoy, guys. PWCC is a great way to sell your sports cards. If you're looking for a way to support the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel, consider using the promo code CAJUN, all caps, C-A-J-U-N, when you're selling your cards on the PWCC marketplace. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard, coming at you from the great state of Louisiana, and we've got, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, some craziness today, some insanity. It is going to be very Jordan heavy because a lot of the top 48 cards were Jordan cards. And to be honest with you, a lot of these were low pop, obscure cards that are just kind of fun to look at, but there's not a lot of reliable sales data out there. So uh, without any delay, let's get cranking, and we will start with, let me make sure... Okay, that's as, yeah, that's as big as I can get. That's what she said. Okay, here we go. Card number one. We got a Kawhi Leonard. Remember him? I don't uh, because he's never available. I don't know if he's coming back for the playoffs. Nobody does because, as usual, he's kept the entire world guessing as to whether he is healthy or not. If I had to guess, I would always err on the side of not healthy. Uh, the 2012 Select Gold Prism Kawhi, serial number to 10, autograph, uh, BGS 9.5 does 2,310. I think in 2021, this card sold for $800 billion. Uh, next on the list, we got the 1998 EX Century Kobe Duncan Go Nuts, the BGS 9.5 copy, great image of Kobe, going up for a reverse layup. 2,310 for that BGS 9.5. That's a Gem Plus copy. Those cards, uh, believe it or not, are very, very easy to grade. They grade really well. There's numerous BGS 10s <coughs> out there for the Jordan, and I presume that's also the case for the Kobe Duncan Go Nuts. 2020 Contenders Optic Tyrese Halliburton, another gold. This one's serial number to 10 as well. It's serial number 1 out of 10, so math nerds all over the world are throwing a party with their pocket protectors and calculators. Uh, 2,400 for this Halliburton. He kind of ended the, the season uh, with a whimper. Uh, I know he had an injury that was an issue, and then, of course, Siakam came and ate up some of his usage. He was on a first-team All-NBA, dare I say, MVP-type pathway, and kind of finished the season a little weak, in my personal opinion. We'll see how the Pacers do. Can they win around in the playoffs against my Bucks? I would not put it past them. The Bucks are in a bad, bad way right now. 2019 Immaculate Collection. This is a Zion. This is the gold parallel uh, from Immaculate. Uh, serial number 10 out of 10. 2,400 for this pop one. Only two graded higher. Next to that, I think this card's awesome. This is a card that I would have loved to have bought and graded it. It's not graded. Looks like it's got a touch of white on the corner. It's an NBA. Uh, anytime you buy a raw card on a PWCC weekly or premier auction, you do get the NBA heat map and the NBA kind of grade. It's kind of a first look at potential issues the card may have. And so if you ever wanted to know more about the card, you can always click into the card like I just did. And we're going to talk about the card. It's the 2008 Ultimate Collection Foursomes. And it's just guys that just reek that era, 2008. I mean, this is like a great quartet. All of the patches are intricate and multicolored and multi-breaks. It's Nash, it's T-Mac, it's Kobe, and it's LeBron. I mean, what else speaks to the, uh, to the, I don't even know what you call those, the late 2000s, pre-2010, other than those four players. And here's your heat map down here. And you can really, really zoom in if you want to. Uh, as you can see, I'm down here. NBA has, uh, you know, 
said that there's a bottom right corner back issue, bottom left corner issue, and if you really want to look at the card, you can go boom, and you can kind of go in yourself, and you can see what Mike Baker saw right there. There's some edge kind of slash corner wear down there in the bottom right. Bottom left, same kind of thing. Pretty serious edge wear on this one, but uh, I don't have to tell you guys, this is one of those cards where the front of the card's so mesmerizing, you may not even ever flip the card over, although you do want to verify you know, where the patches came from, but that's just a glimpse of what the NBA does uh, when you send a raw card to PSA, and if you do ever send a card to PSA, whether you're vaulting the card, whether you intend to sell the card, please guys consider using the promo code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N. It's the really the only way that I get paid to do this content. 2018 Flawless, Shea Gilgis, Alexander. Oh, by the way, that badass foursomes crazy patch, quad patch card goes for 2520 and it is serial numbered 2 out of 20. Uh, next to that, we've got a uh, SGA rookie. He's hot as a firecracker, y'all. He's going to end up first team All-NBA. Uh, serial numbered 5 out of 25. He's not going to get that MVP. That's going to be Jokic's to win. Vegas is never this wrong. Plus, Doncic has made a push. I think Doncic and SGA alternating second place votes is going to push Jokic even further into the lead. 2,640 for this uh, serial number 25 flawless rookie auto for SGA from 2018. Another SGA rookie, albeit in a uh, one of those weird kind of products that I don't think anybody ever really took to, you know, in the hobby. Although this is a great looking card. Uh, and I can't read the inscription, but... It says, I don't know, guys, somebody in the comments, please tell me what this inscription says. It's something, and it's it says, at shy. I don't know what this says right here, but it's something at shay or at shy, depending on how you pronounce it. Serial number to 25, BGS 9.5, no subs for those Panini in case. It was one of the worst ideas ever, in my opinion. That card goes for 2640 It is a good-looking, clean, simple, elegant card, though. Um, big time, huge patch, huge... Uh, multiple colors. Looks like a freaking rainbow. Roy G. Biv on this mother right here. 2015 National Treasures Colossal Kevin Durant Patch Auto. Serial number to 10. That's a pop one. It's a PSA 10. It's prime. Uh, 2,640 for that. Cartoon Curry does 2,640. Uh, we've got a Jordan that somebody crossed over. It was probably a BGS 9, and it crossed to a PSA 5. Those crossovers I don't think are going the way that people expected them to. I know because I'm a PMG Red collector. By the way, that's a harbinger of things to come. Stay tuned. There is a PMG Red that I have mentioned in the introduction that you are not going to believe when we get to the top of this list from last night's PWCC Weekly Auction. 2,640 for this gigantic 5x7, beautiful 1984 star Court Kings MJ doing his reverse rock the baby uh, dunk. And then we've got the first of a few Victor Wimbanyama cards we're going to see. We're not going to dabble into this one because there's a bigger batter, uh, Victor Wimbanyama, coming up that we're going to do a little data dive into, a little price data research on. This is the 2023 Blue Seismic. I don't even know what that means or what it's number two. That's how long it's been since I have been in the uh, ultra modern prism card buying uh, mode. But this one's serial number to 99. So I guess the blue seismic is serial number to 99. The true blue, if I'm not mistaken, is serial number to 199. I might be wrong on that, but I think. So the question is, do you want the flat blue 199 or do you want the blue seismic? Uh, 99, and uh, I don't know the answer to that. I guess uh, time will tell, and the the people will decide what they want. The first card we're going to look up in Card Ladder is a uh, is a Jordan card that you're going to find in the Michael Jordan uh, hierarchy, the Cajun Cardboard Michael Jordan hierarchy. It's the 1997 Ultra Stars, and it is uh, a PSA nine. Remember, there's a Big Brother Ultra Stars Gold, which is one in 28,800 pack odds. This is a little more attainable, a little more common, uh, but it's still a rare card nonetheless. The 97 Ultra Stars, uh, number nine, a uh, PSA nine. This is only a pop 19. There's only 21 tens out there, and I've got one of them, and ain't going anywhere. So that leaves 20. Uh, 2,880 for this PSA nine. Here's your chart. Interesting. Uh, over the last six months, it's sold four times. It's up 28 percent. But it's a tale of two uh, tale of two directions. It's 2250, 2950, up to a peak of 3200. This one comes back a little bit, almost to the comp before that, to 2880. So who knows where this one's going? We'll stay tuned and look at the next one. Let's zoom out a little bit to a year. Okay, the card was way up at 3750. So here's a Jordan card down 23% over the last year. I know PSA tens are running. Maybe it's time to look at PSA 9s. The card's flat over the last two years. 
<coughs> which is more than you can say for a lot of cards in the basketball card hobby. All right, moving along. Uh, another Jordan card, got to look up. It's the Hooper Stars. This is a PSA 10, and that's the magic uh, phrase lately. Look, PSA 10 Jordan, PSA 10 Jordan, PSA 10 Jordan. Uh, insert, parallel, insert. Well, actually, insert, yeah, insert, parallel, insert on this row. 2008 2880, 2008 2080. So three Jordans, three PSA 10s. All 2,880. Let's look up the Hooper Stars in sales history. Here's the card itself, just so you guys can see it big screen. It is die cut. It is much better looking in hand than it is on a two-dimensional image on my computer down here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This card, uh, it looks like, uh, has sold 64 times in a PSA 10. A rare card nonetheless. Look, when you start talking about 42 of them out there, there's more than 42 people that want this card, and that's why it's selling for $2,880. Uh, up 330 bucks from the last sale, up from the sale before that, up from the sale before that, up from the sale before that, uh, down from August of 2023. So one, two, three, four, five, the highest of the last five. Hooper Stars looks to be doing just fine. Now we've got a couple variations of this card. This is the 97 Finest, number 287. It's a creator subset card. This is a refractor, but it is serial number to 1,090. So if you're looking to get into a Jordan card from the 90s, that's serial number. A couple come to mind that you can get for, not cheap, but you can get kind of on the cheap, I guess is the phrase they like to use. This serial number to 1,090 refractor would be a nice parallel option to look at. Although PSA 10 obviously is going to run you 2880, that's a big number. Uh, but I think in an eight or a nine, you could pick it up for a little bit cheaper price, or maybe a BGS slab. Another option for inserts would be, I think, one of the highest serial number Jordan cards from the 90s would be the Take It to Dot Net which is serial number to 1,000. So those are a couple of options if you're looking to get a serial number Jordan card from the 90s, both of which appear in the Cajun Cardboard Michael Jordan hierarchy. This refractor, no coating, the way God intended, with really good looking coloring to me, sold last night for 2,880. I did not look it up. Yes, I did. There it is. Up from the last sale, uh, up from the sale before that, up from the sale before that. Uh, you gotta go back again to uh, fall of 2023 to find a higher sale. This is an interesting one. I wonder where this one's at price-wise. So this is uh, maybe the 10th highest. No, we gotta keep going. 2880, this card's not exactly running. It is up from the last couple of sales, but it's only a pop 36, and out of the 1,090, it's only been graded 100 times. That seems odd to me, because if I had this card, I'd grade this card. Now, the thing you gotta think about is there's also a whiff coating, and so uh, PSA probably has a separate uh, pop report with coating and without coating. That's just a hunch. Somebody uh, confirm or deny that in the comments. And so this is the without coating variation. Uh, 1995 hoops. Uh, actually, I, I guess I should verify that this does come with a coating. I'm almost certain it does. 1995 hoops hot list. There's a couple years of hot list, Jordan. This is the 95. This is the PSA 10. Cajun Cardboard, uh, yes, I've referred to myself in the third person, made a run at this card, but not really because uh, I'll show you the graph and I'll show you why I bowed out of this uh, this war that was waged last night for this 1995 Hoops Hot List. That's why. That is the two-year graph of this damn card, Pop 27. Tough, tough card in PSA 10. Not that rare. It's in the hierarchy, but it's not that rare. The pack odds are not overwhelming. As you can see, it's been graded uh, over 700 times. So there's over 700 of them out there just graded. But PSA 10 is where it gets elite. And this is why these are running, because it's a pop 27. So you take a card that there's 700 in the population, but there's only 27 10s. And that's when you get graphs that look like this. Uh, over the last eight sales, the card's up. 144%, yes, that's more than 2X, uh, from 11.79, steadily, steadily up to 15.76 uh, just last month, and then last night, this is where it ran, I was willing to even go over the 15.76, in fact, I know I was, I probably would have pushed this damn thing near 2,000, I can't remember what my high bid was, but this thing just got away from me, and I was happy to let it go because I picked up some other really important cards to put into my PC last night. I was very excited about. Uh, April 14th, 2024, last night this card goes for a whopping $2,880. 
that is uh, by far, by far, far, far the all-time record, as you can see from the all-time graph. 37 sales over the course of uh, 17 years. God have mercy, somebody picked it up in PSA 10 for $27. That makes me want to uh, vomit and find a time machine down here somewhere. So big, uh, big sale right there for that 95 hot list. This dude, I love him. He's on my fantasy team. He's a fantasy darling, uh, as they like to uh, say in the old school world of fantasy football. Uh, he puts up great numbers, good stocks, steals and blocks. Uh, I don't know if he's an alpha franchise type, but he's more like a Sean Marion, Josh Smith, uh, like his predecessor at the Atlanta Hawks. Josh Smith, sort of Swiss Army knife dude who can do a little bit of everything. Jalen Johnson, his national treasures, serial number to 99, true RPA, great looking patch. Does $3,000 in a BGS 9.5 mixed gem slab. Pretty cool sale there for Jalen Johnson. And then a guy that I'm not real high on, but everybody seems to love, Jonathan Kaminga with his awesome JK, elaborate JK autograph. This is his National Treasures Gold Horizontal. Cool patch for sure. Serial number to only 10. Also Mike Baker authenticated like all the raw cards you'll see on the PWCC Weekly Auction. 3000 bucks for that one. And then just a fascinating card here. I'm a huge dirt guy. I think he's got the most important ring ring in NBA history. And by I say that, I mean, if you weight the rings on likelihood, his has got to be at or near the top of the most unlikely rings. If you want to know what I'm talking about, he's only got one. He didn't have another all-star on him on that Dallas Mavericks team at the time. So he was the clear-cut solo alpha. And then he pissed on some of the greatest teams in NBA history to get that ring. So I weight Dirk Nowitzki's one ring almost as much as two normal rings. That's how crazy that, uh, that playoff run was where he took them to the title. Go back and look at who they beat and who was on the rosters of the teams that Dirk Nowitzki beat. It is absolutely insane. This is his die cut, Super Fractor, one of one, uh, 2006 finest. It does $3,000. Uh, Chet Holmgren, horizontal ticket, one of one, does uh, 3,120. Sorry, one of seven. Um, that is his jersey number, and this is one of seven. Uh, 3,120 for this PSA 10. PSA 10 is, makes it a pop three out of those seven. And then a card with Skinny Giannis, right? 2013 Skinny, welcome to the NBA, Giannis Select Blue. True quad gym, serial number to 49, uh, does 3,120. And then finally, I'd get to do some damage in this thing. Uh, <coughs> you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I've been selling a bunch of cards in the PWCC weeklies, duplicate Jordans and non-Jordans, but just kind of, I don't want to say consolidating, but uh, selling some lower graded and or duplicate PSA 10 copies of cards to buy unique cards that I do not own a copy of. And this is one of them, the 93 Stadium Club Triple Double, sub, you know, card number one from the 93 Stadium Club set. This is Jordan's first day issue, which has really, really, really tough back odds. Uh, and there's a very small print run. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I reached pretty strongly and uh, with two hands and grab this thing for 3,240. Where is it? There it is. It's a pop 22 card. Uh, here is my sale, right? So I am way above the last sale. I'm a thousand bucks over the last sale, a thousand bucks over there. I'm a thousand bucks over the last six sales. But I saw this back in April of 2023. The card has been uh, at a much higher number in the past, 5,100. I believe in this card. I think this is a big card. I think those first day issue are more rare than people realize. Here I am hyping my card up. It's not a pump and dump because I'm not selling it. Uh, it's just a pump. Uh, but uh, as you can see, 380 have been graded all time. Uh, and there's a humongous, and it makes no sense, but there's a huge drop off from PSA 10 to PSA 9. So uh, it's a card that you can get your hands on. Uh, and that PSA 9 price is obviously wrong because the PSA 8.5 is 332 and PSA 9 is 305. We know that's not going to make much sense. Um, so I think the PSA 9 is probably worth a lot more than 300 bucks. Anyway, uh, this PSA 10, uh, I reached out and decided to set a, uh, not the highest price of all time, but the second highest price of all time at 3240. So uh, let me know in the comments how dumb I am. 1986 Fleer Jordan 9 does 3240. We'll see another one of those. This is a cool uh, Derrick Rose 2010 National Treasures Century uh, game worn logo, partial logo man patch auto BGS 9. It's a one of one and it does 3600. Boy, I wish we could have seen a healthy Derrick Rose for his entire career. Everybody rooted for this guy. I've never heard anybody say one bad word about this guy. 
BGS 8.5 LeBron patch auto does 3720 from 2004 SP game use that serial number to 100. Let's look up the round ball royalty without coating refractor PSA 10 Jordan. Uh, this card is right, yeah. It is a pop 39 and an interesting graph here. This is the last two years. The card is up 30%, all things considered, but it's been a wild ride over the last 24 months. Started at 28.78, rose immeasurably to 4,500, dipped way back down uh, below 3,000, uh, and then it stayed over 3,000 for about six consecutive sales, then dipped to the lowest. I think it's been, yeah, 2,800 is the lowest the card had ever been, and that's just two weeks ago, and then it jumped all the way back up to the second highest it's ever sold for in the last two years, last night. So I don't know what the hell is going on here, but the card went from 2,800 to 3,720. Must have been a Cajun cardboard idiot-like person out there that did what I did uh, on the uh, on the last card that we just looked at, the Stadium Club first day issue. Uh, but that Round Bowl Royalty, tremendous sale last night for PSA 10. And this is a cool one. This is a subset rookie card. It's a rookie, uh, but it's the subset rookie refractor uh, debuts. Uh, Kevin, um, Tim Duncan, card number 101. Uh, it does 3720, and it's in a black label, which makes it a very elite pop two. Black label, black jersey. Uh, I would call that a color match. That's just me. Uh, here's the other, another Jordan, and it just goes to show you not all nines are the same. This Jordan sticker with Otis Birdsong in the background does 3720. This one did 3240, so about a $480 difference between those two. Same grade, same card, same sticker, I should say. Uh, what about the patch parallel for Yao Ming? Uh, from first year exquisite collection. This is a big card for a Yao Ming collector. That's why someone forked over 3,840 American dollars for it. Really cool patch. It's a little patch window, but there's a hell of a lot going on in that patch. Uh, 3,840. This is a pop one. It is serial number 10 out of 10. Uh, Yao's number 11. So, ooh, so close. Uh, BGS 8.5, 3840. Uh, we've got a Kevin Durant gold flawless patch auto does 3960. And then we've got the uh, exquisite jersey patch collection, same exact uh, you know, insert for uh, the insert parallel, parallel insert from 2003 exquisite as the Yao, but this is Tim Duncan. And Timmy is also a pop one. And Timmy outsold uh, Yao by, what is that? $240, so there you go. Uh, Steph Curry autograph Panini Court Kings on card autograph. I'm pretty sure I can't really tell but I'm pretty sure I think that's Monte Ellis in the background watching uh, way in the background that might be Brandon Roy right here going to block that shot. Steph looks like he's seven years old. He his early year cards are hilarious to look at. He is tiny and his arms are tiny and he looks young as hell. 4,200. This is serial number two. I don't know. Someone explain this to me. 649. I don't think I've ever seen another card. Let me get some energy. I gotta get some energy for this Steph Curry card. There's no way I can get through this without some of this energy drink. I'm about to hit play on a cardio workout in my office right after this because I'm getting fatter because I'm I can't stop eating. Uh, I don't know if they have Bluebell ice cream all over the country. I don't know if that's a thing in the South or whatever. But they've got this new flavor out there called Bride's Cake. I don't know if y'all have tried Bluebell ice cream. For God's sakes, please go try Bride's Cake flavor. I think it's new. It's new down here, and it tastes like a wedding cake. It's like ice cream and a wedding cake, which when you eat a wedding cake, you want to eat it with vanilla ice cream. It is the greatest tasting flavor ever, so I've gotten addicted to that lately. Uh, so I need to drink energy drinks and actually move for once instead of just talking and screaming. i got to do something. Uh <clears throat> Uh, to stop getting fat. So anyway, that's a slight digression. Uh, okay, here we go. Steph Curry, autograph, PSA 10. We think it's on card. 649, serial number two. 4,200 last night for that Steph. I think I've got that somewhere. There it is. That's a pop 59. Not doing well, guys. Steph cards are really kind of struggling. I think people realize the end is near. He's not going to win another one. Certainly not winning it with this team. Uh, that card's down 24% over the last six months. It's actually even over the last year, which really surprises me because most of Steph's stuff has crashed. Like a lot of players, LeBron, you know, pretty much everybody but Jordan's cards over the last two years are down. Kobe, Steph, all, of, all the big dogs, Shaq, everybody. Not, well, maybe not Shaq. Down 44% over the last two years. So that's kind of what I was getting at. So kind of surprised that over the last year, it's really not that bad. It's sort of evened out. Uh, but this card does nosedive from the last sale. 5101 down to 4200 so down $900 on that Steph autograph. We're going to look up a Kobe card because Kobe deserves some love too. And this card's actually going to yield some pretty interesting data. This is a pop five, okay? 
<coughs> it's Kobe's 2006 Finest Gold Refractor. I love these Finest Refractors. All the colors, gold, blue, red, green, black, red, all that crap. 4,320 for this Pop 5 Kobe card. We had to look it up here. Uh, that is actually up from the last sale, up from the sale before that. You gotta go all the way back to 2022 to find a higher sale. So I think this is a great result. You know, alt, nobody looks on alt for cards. So the alt card sold for 35.38. And then eBay had one for even lower, 33.75. And then this one last night sells for 43.20. So that's actually a real, that's about a thousand bucks. It's actually a really good sale for the seller of that card right there. And congrats to the buyer because that's just an awesome color match card. It's just a really awesome card. And then this card's awesome as well. It's in 2016 Select Prism True Black One of One, Jamal Murray. Do you remember him? It's like the world forgot him. This is the point guard for the reigning NBA champions who were at, well, they, I think they finished tied, but they're second in the West, right? And uh, so we're waiting to see who their first round opponent's going to be. They look to be primed and rejuvenated and ready to ready to go. Christian Brown has uh, proved that he is already in playoff mode because he yammed one directly on Rudy Gobert's fat face the other night. Uh, the most overrated defensive player of all time. Yes, I said it. People act like he's one of the greatest defenders of all time. I think he's one of the most overrated defenders of all time uh, because you can't put him on the court in real games against real teams who play small ball. Uh, 2016 Prism Black One of One Jamal Murray BGS 9.5 does 4,440. That's got to be one of his best rookie cards. I'm serious. That's got to be a top 10 Jamal Murray rookie card. I'm, I'm not mistaken because it was back in the era before there was 8 billion one of ones of every every single player. Um, 2009 Steph Curry, another autograph Steph Curry. This one's serial number to 499. So we saw 649 and 499. And we're about to see one numbered to 100. This is a really cool card because it's a BGS 1010. And that one does 4800. This one does 4680. I mean, I'm clearly going, even though it's a weird prestige product, I'm going with the 100 BGS 1010. Uh, over the uh, 2009, I don't even know what Classics is. Steph had some weird arbitrary autograph rookie cards. This is a card I need, but this is a card I didn't want to move on because of the, uh, you can see the bifurcation. You can see the refractor line right down the middle. You got to be blind not to see it. Uh, dark on the left, light on the right. The line goes right down the middle. Of course, this is uh, a card that you will see in tier one. This is a tier one Jordan card that somebody picked up for 4,680. I just couldn't get past the refractor line. I just couldn't do it. This is the 96 Flare Showcase Legacy Collection Row 2, serial number to 150 Michael Jordan, and it sold for 4,680. I don't think I looked that up. I didn't. Okay, so we'll keep going. A Chet one of one select rookie signatures black PSA 9 does 5280. Uh, the LeBron we see pretty regularly is the 2003 SP Authentic signatures on card LeBron PSA 9. That does 5280 as well. And then uh, right next to that, we've got a really big Tim Duncan rookie card. And the silver label actually doesn't bother me because it sort of matches the black and white slash gray silver uh, rookie card. I think it's a great image of Tim Duncan. He means business, and he did mean business, and he's one of the greatest power forwards that ever lived, slash the greatest power forward that ever lived. Even better than uh, the aforementioned Dirk Nowitzki with his super ring. This platinum medallion in this year of 1997 is actually in serial numbered. It was serial numbered to 100, and uh, this BGS 9 makes it a pop 6, and there are no BGS 9.5s or BGS 10s. So this is the best in class for this Tim Duncan platinum medallion rookie card, serial number to 100. 6,900 the card does. Here it is. There are, like I said, there's only six of them, and this card took a bath last night. So the card all time, 1,300, 1,900. This is way back, guys, almost freaking eight years ago now. It spiked up here to 9,120 and then retreated all the way to 6,900 last night. Let me know what you think about that. Obviously, if you're into it right here, somebody turned a nice little profit of 4X, right? But uh, if you if you bought it last time at 9,120, you're probably not liking the result from last night at 6,900. You're just not going to see very many of those out there, though. It's a pretty rare card. And then now we can dive into some Victor Wimanyama nonsense. So this is his 2023 Prism Orange serial number to 49. Let me just give you a, a, a lesson in why I am worried about all Victor Wimbanyama cards, all cards period from the year 2023. I wanted to look this card up in card ladder sales history. So I plugged in 2023 Prism Wimbanyama Orange. Okay. Here's what I ended up having to do. I had to take out Monopoly. I had to take out Draft. I had to take out Wave. I had to take, back, I take out Spellbound. I had to take out Elite. 
I had to take out Pulsar. That's how many just orange variations there are out there. So to get the actual damn card that I wanted, I had to net out all of those other phrases. That's how many there's now there's parallels of parallels. There's orange, uh, you know, butt crust. There's orange uh, monkey flavor. I mean, it's like ridiculous. I, I don't understand what the hell they're doing with the printing machines at Panini. Like, can we not just eat? I mean, even if you want to pick another color, pick magenta. But God, why do we need orange wave, orange this, orange pulsar, orange? Th just pick one color so people can keep track of what they're numbered to. Like blue was 199 for the longest. And now there's blue seismic and there's blue pulsar and there's blue disco ball and there's blue choice and there's blue fast break. It's like, that's the issue. That's why I've gravitated back into the 90s. And I don't want it to be that way. I want to open up 2023 Prism and try to pull a women Yama card. But I can't do it. I, I just can't get myself the, the financial fallacy that exists in the hobby. It just it, I can't get over that hurdle. Let me know if I'm the crazy one. Obviously, somebody's buying this shit. And so, excuse me, this stuff. I'm trying to get better at cussing. Uh, but So let me know. Am I just grumpy old man? I might just be grumpy old man. Get off my lawn, guy. I'm dreading hitting this button on this cardio video. I'm getting old and everything kind of hurts. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, let's look at the card. This is the highest the card has ever sold for, right? And I'm including PSA 10s and PSA 9s in here, right? So uh, as you'll see, this is sorted by highest. The PSA 10 has sold for 176 uh, and then three weeks later, it sold for 14.3. So there's a $3,000 drop right there. Somebody on March uh, 12th paid 12,000 for a raw copy. That's ballsy, and they have a lot of confidence. This is serial numbered one out of 49, so that one jumped up to 11,000. Uh, but as you can see, sorted by price, this card sold for 17,000, and the orange last night sold for 7,200. Let's go back. Let's sort it by the worst selling oranges, and you're gonna find our card last night. And here's the deal. Could, could a player have finished the season any hotter than Victor Wimanyama? He was the number one fantasy player. He's the unanimous rookie of the year. You can throw the Chet crap out the window. Ain't no chance in hell Victor Wimanyama is not winning rookie of the year, which actually makes me happy because I bet a Futures fan duel before the season started that he would win it. and He's going to run with it. It's not even close. He should have been defensive player of the year, in my opinion. That's just my personal opinion. You can go look at the numbers and tell me I'm crazy. Go look at the on-off stats. Everybody's like, well, the Spurs suck at defense. Well, they do, but why don't you go look at how bad they suck when Wimanyama's not on the floor, right? Isn't that the measuring stick? Or how about this? Why don't you take Victor Wimanyama off the Spurs and put him on the Minnesota Timberwolves? And why don't we go back and revisit how good their defense is with Wimanyama instead of Rudy Gobert? Wimanyama, somebody who can actually switch pick and rolls and causes more havoc than any player I have ever seen in the history of the NBA, and he's 19 years old. Uh, I want his cards. I want to buy his cards. I can't do it. Uh, and this is why. Because the cards sold for $10,000 less than the PSA 10 did uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so this is the second lowest sale of this card ever. Uh, we should probably plug in here uh, PSA 9 so we can do some apples to apples comparisons. There's the PSA 9. It sold three times. Uh, in, on March 18th, a week ago it sold for $98.50. And then uh, last night it sold for $7,200. So I think the card's going to continuously work its way down. Why? Because like I said, there's 800 million, billion, zillion, trillion parallels of all of these players. And so, uh, you know, the further we get away from product release, the more these numbers are going to go down. It'll hit a saturation point and it might be years. It's going to hit a saturation point. Like I said, you can't have a better prospect. Victor Wimanyama's rookie season is historic and legendary. It's like he's the first to do this since Wilt. He's the first to do this since LeBron. He's the first to do this since fill in the blank. So he could not have been more impressive, but his cards are going to drop, guys. They just are as we get further and further away from release date, uh, and then we'll get to a saturation point, and then uh, maybe <coughs> it'll make sense to buy in. But I'm not buying in because if I had to guess, I'd say the next PSA 9, three months from now, is going to sell for another $2,000 less than this. It'd probably sell for $5,000. Maybe I'm crazy. Athlete of the Century Platinum. There's a, actually a lot of Jordan 101s out there. And this is a non-playing year one of one. Um, but I know this means a lot to a lot of people. And it's a PSA 10, which is also really, really cool. It's a die cut and it's a, from 99 upper deck. And it's a one of one Jordan. Okay. So there's not that many of those out there, even post-playing years. 7,500 for this card right here. Remember, one of ones were excluded uh, from the Cajun cardboard Michael Jordan hierarchy because it would have muddied the picture up, right? I wanted it to be cards that mere mortals can obtain. 
Uh, the 2022 Bowman T-shirt, uh, France jersey, gold foil V1, Victor Wimanyama University autograph thingy. Uh, 8,100 for this serial number to 50 card. BGS 10 makes it a pop one. That's cool, I guess. Uh, another Jordan autograph from 2006 Chronology. This is its MVP winner's autograph. Really good looking card here. I kind of like this card. Uh, 8,400. This one's also serial number to 50, and it's a pop three in that 9.5 slab. Mixed gem. Uh, and then does anybody even remember this guy for for the longest time? I had to listen to Bill Simmons and all these talk, You know, I like listening to Bill Simmons, but I cannot stress enough how some of these people I don't understand how they can get so carried away like I, All I heard when I heard, uh, you know, Evan Mobley's name was he's a com combination of Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett and I wanted to freaking throw a brick through my TV because if you watch the freaking guy play he doesn't. He can't even play offense. Like the guy's not Tim Duncan, uh, and now we've had two years of evidence that the guy's not freaking Tim Duncan, and he doesn't have the attitude or, or the dog in him of Kevin Garnett. So stop throwing around names like that. You know, uh, it's like it's ridiculous. It's like I don't know. I mean, you could say Victor Wembanyama looks like a young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or looks like a young, you know, Rudy Gobert, Ben Wallace slash whatever. But like Evan Mobley, for God's sakes, watch the games. Nevertheless, this PSA 10 Black Shimmer Evan uh, Mobley, I guess, again, I don't live in the prism, you know, Panini Ultra Modern Prism world, but I guess there's Flat Black and Nebula would be the top two from the prism product, correct? Those were both one of ones as well, and I, I guess they would rank higher as far as Evan Mobley, one of one black rookies. And then after that, I, I think Black Shimmer comes shortly after that. This is a PSA 10, it's a one of one. He's a good player, don't get me wrong, he's a really good player. I just don't see what everybody else sees. I just see, a, I mean, I just see a really good, you know, NBA pro who's going to be a pretty good defensive player for a long time. And if he can really shoot threes, he could be okay. But like he's been compared to Anthony Davis, he's not. He's been compared to Tim Duncan, he's got to have mercy, he's not. He's been compared to Kevin Garnett, he's not even close. Just because he's tall and skinny doesn't make him those three guys. So I think he was anointed the next great power forward way too early. That's just me, and that is a rant. Uh, Steph, Steph Curry, serial number to 31. Shit, that's low. Excuse me. Gosh, dog it. 11,100 for this BGS 8.5 Steph Curry parallel, uh, serial number to 31. And here we go. We finally get to the top row, guys, and we're going to start with the Zion True RPA. This is a BGS 8.5. Uh, the Pelicans are limping into the play-in game. I was going to go. It's a... Uh, Tuesday night, I was going to go down there. The Lakers just handed them their ass. They're going to play the Lakers again. It's going to be an angry Lakers who want to win the game. Uh, they're going to play them on Tuesday. I think I'm going down to that as well. Uh, that's tomorrow. Sorry. I'm going down there tomorrow to check that game out. Um, Zion, uh, again, disappeared, flopped again in uh, the most important game of the year to get them the sixth seed, and that sixth seed was lost to the Phoenix Suns. So now the Pelicans find themselves in a play-in. And, um, you know, this dude's got to show up, dude. This dude has got to show up because that's the second time in a really important game, and I'm referring back to that play-in tournament where Zion has not shown up on a must-win stage. And so Tuesday is another. It's his third must-win stage this year. He has got to show up. This is his true RPA. Uh, 13,200 for this card. we got to look it up, right? Uh, here it is. That's not pretty. That, if you're scoring at home, is down 82% all time. That is scary, right? I know cards are down over the last two years. This card's down 82% and a, an aggregate of uh, $62,000 loss on this card in this grade. And this is the lowest the card has ever sold for in history in an 8.5 slab. So maybe some other people are seeing what I see, which is, Zion's really athletic, but he's also really left-handed and really not that skilled. He just really is big and strong and fast, and I don't know how long that's going to last because he can't shoot a basketball. Uh, PSA 9, Jordan, typewriter, old-school PSA label, does 16,200. Uh, I'm going to pull it up because we always like to check in on the 86 Fleer. The PSA 9 is as flat as a fritter, even though it's a wild, wild ride. <laughs> so over the last six months, look at this card. It's a pop 2,984. Yes, it's not a rare card. Uh, and it is a uh, plus 2%, which in my book is flat because it just depends on the last one and the first one. But that's about as flat as you can get, albeit with a lot of up and downs. 
uh, for the PSA 9 Jordan. Uh, and then here's the deal. This is what I mentioned in the introduction. Uh, again, <laughs> I am a veteran PMG Red collector. Uh, I had over 130 1997 Red PMGs, so I know a little bit about this. I don't know a lot about a lot, and as you can see from listening to this video, there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, I think, I don't know, I guess, I hope. Somebody tell me in the comments. I know 97 PMG Reds, and I know this is bananas. Uh, 28,200 for somebody who put it on the table, basically, for uh, to use a euphemism, they dropped it on the table and said, you know what, I want the greatest John Starks Red PMG in the world. I want it, and I want to have the greatest PMG Red set in the world, and I want it so much that I am willing to pay Oh my God, 28, that is a used BMW, uh, 28,000 for the best PMG Red, or I should say the highest graded PMG Red John Starks card in the world. That is only uh, 13X higher than the highest sale ever. Uh, right below it uh, from 2023, which was an authentic altered. Uh, but if we look at the pop report, this is, why, this is where, you know, deep pockets, Big swinging members, we'll just call them that. Big swinging members. Let's just say somebody put their big swinging member on the table last night and said, Money is no object. I think I'll take the greatest John Starks PMG Red in the world uh, for 28 grand. Here you go. There it is. PSA 7, highest graded copy in the world. Uh, and if, for those of you who are confused, a PSA 7 is significantly better than, well, I shouldn't say that. It's better than a BGS 8.5 in most cases because there's usually a one and a half to two grade gap if you're going to cross a BGS to a PSA in 1997 red PMG specifically. I'm talking about, I'm talking about prism orange pulsars. I'm talking about 97 red PMG. So an 8 is about a uh, PSA 6. Uh, uh, a BGS 8.5 is about a PSA 6 or 7. It just depends. Somewhere in there. So, greatest John Starks card in the world. There's the card. That card won. He was Jordan's ultra nemesis. There's, other than Lambeer, uh, and then, well, really, all of the Pistons, except for Dumars, who I wanted to punch directly in their nuggets in their face. Uh, Starks was, I hated this dude. I, I know he had a great story about how he got to the league and made a lot of money and was an, actually a really good player. I hated this son of a gun because I loved Jordan. And if you guys watched Jordan and you cheered for the Bulls, you definitely hated this dude. So it's truly ironic that John Starks finally beat Michael Jordan uh, by the tune of $12,000 last night on PWCC Weekly uh, number 117. So who would have ever thought in the basketball card world John Starks would win and Jordan would lose. All right, let's go back real quick. Sorry. Our top 10. Starks. Yes, it still sounds weird to say it. Starks, Jordan, Zion, Curry, Mobley, Jordan, Wimbanyama, Jordan, Wimbanyama, Tim Duncan. So a little bit of variety, a little bit of fun. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, if you are the first time ever listening or watching this video every single Monday. You're going to get these every single Monday morning. I try to get it up while you guys are having coffee, getting ready for work to start your week. I do hope you guys have a blessed and fantastic week in and out of the hobby. Go out there and get it. I'm about to take another swig of this energy drink. Go over here, hit play on this hit video. I think that's the, the way the kids call it now, hit high intensity interval training. And uh, try not to break anything at age 49. Yeah, I said 49. Um, so I hope you guys also have a great week. Go ahead and attack it like a Spartan on steroids. You know what I'm saying? Go attack it like a, a, a Spartan warrior who just did a line of cocaine. I'm not endorsing cocaine, right? Uh, but uh, but that's kind of the, the mindset that I've got this week. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get it. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you were one of the guys who won one of these cards in last night's PWC's weekly auction, congrats. If you sold cards last night, I did. I sold 52 cards last night in the PWCC weekly auction and uh, raked in about 6200 bucks, which I'll use to pay for the Jordan cards that I won in last night's auction. Some of the other Jordan stuff that I won didn't make the top 48, but it still matters. And that's the beauty of collecting is that like, you know, we don't have to buy the highest dollar cards uh, to get that awesome rush and that feeling. Um, it's not going to match doing a lot of cocaine from what I've heard, but it's a really good feeling. Actually, it might be better to pick up a nice Jordan low pop PSA 10 for under comps. That's an amazing feeling. And I had that feeling last night on two or three Jordan cards, which I'll, uh, I'll 
certainly share in an upcoming mail day on my channel. But if this is your first time watching, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you've watched this long, thank you so much. Most people tune out because right now is about when I ramble and start talking about big picture stuff that nobody gives a damn about. They just want the data. They just want the numbers. I got to give the people what they want. Uh, and it does sound like I'm on cocaine because I talk really fast, but I've got a lot to say and I'm already at the 42 minute mark. So as always, have a great week, guys. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in buying or selling on PWCC, you can message me on Instagram, Cajun underscore cardboard. Uh, don't forget to use the promo code Cajun, all caps. If you are vaulting or selling on PWCC, it is really the only support that I get for this channel at the moment financially. It's C-A-J-U-N, all caps. Some people asked, in fact, I got a message this morning. Hey, I sent a card in. I forgot to put in the promo code when I submitted the card. Is it too late? And the answer is no. Uh, go to your profile on PWCC, scroll down, go to submissions. You'll see your card. When PWCC gets your card, you can click a button that says add promo, and then you can uh, type in Cajun, C-A-J-U-N, after the fact. So if you've got 100 cards in your vault and you want to sell 12 of them, but you never did put in the promo code Cajun, you can still go add that promo code by clicking that add promo button and typing in all caps Cajun, C-A-J-U-N. That way the fine folks at PWCC know that I have a big mouth and I actually have a little bit of, dare I say the word, influence in the hobby. I certainly don't want to use that word in the derogatory nature and it's become a derogatory word. Uh, that's not my, uh, my my intention, I assure you, for uh, for starting this channel. But uh, it is the only way that, uh, that the channel gets supported financially and it's not a big number, but uh, it does help me uh, float some of these costs. Thank you guys for watching. By the way, Cajun Cardboard Hierarchy posters are still available three more this weekend or actually seven more three orders came in this weekend for cajun cardboard michael jordan hierarchy posters if you don't know what that is go click uh my youtube description and uh youtube channel and go search playlist michael jordan's uh hierarchy a lot of new jordan collectors are coming in because of the hierarchy project a lot of old veteran collectors are liking to support the project because it brings awareness to something that we love so much which is collecting 90s basketball cards. Uh, if you're interested in a poster, the only way really, the easiest way, just message me on Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram account, go create one, it's free, and message me, Cajun underscore cardboard, and I can give you all the deets, as the kids say, details on how to order one of your own Cajun cardboard Michael Jordan hierarchy posters. Thank you guys for watching, keep collecting, stay positive in the hobby, have a great week, and peace.